Hello and welcome to the Oracle's Classroom. In this final part of the introduction to financial statements, we're going to be taking a look at the statement of shareholders' equity. Now, in the first couple of videos, we took a look at the balance sheet and the income statement and the statement of cash flows. Um, and the, the first two are, are the most commonly discussed. Uh, the cash flow statement is, uh, is, is discussed, but not, uh, not as frequently. And the, the statement of stockholders' equity is probably discussed uh, rarely, or I have not seen it uh, discussed as in-depth as the, other, the first two uh, or, the, or the, the other three. So uh, let's just dig in here. And, and again, um, it's, it's really the same it's it's sort of a different uh, it's a different vantage point into the company. So in, in this in this particular segment, this particular statement, we're going to be taking a look, you know, just at the equity portion of the business, and and so you know you have you have a lot going on here as you can see, but you just break it down into the the sections and take a look, you know, first of all what what they're presenting, and then take a look at the specific numbers and and put some meaning to them. So. Just like the other statements, we have the company name here. We have the what the statement is. It's in thousands, and then we also uh, need to know, you know, what is this representing? So, uh, the the balance sheet was a snapshot in time. The income statement and cash flow statement were over a period of time, and and the statement of shareholders' equity is a little bit of both. So, what we can see is um, you know just breaking this down into, into main main segments so we have these main chunks of rows here uh, we start uh, we start with a balance so that's where it's it's a snapshot in time the ending balance uh, as of 12 31 16 uh, which becomes the beginning balance of 1 1 17 so that's a balance and then we have these other items below it which are changes so those are over a period of time and so this statement we can see that it's it's giving us chunks of time from the beginning of 2017, the end of 2017, the end of 18, and the end of 19. <clears throat> and then we can see the, the equity broken out into different, different segments. So in these columns here, we won't go through each individual one, but you can tell exactly what they're telling you here. Um, one thing I, I've noticed on this statement, uh, some, some companies have, in this case, just dollars listed here. Others have this broken down into both the shares and the dollars. So they're, they're all going to look slightly different, but they're really, they're really going to tell you uh, kind of the same thing uh, for the company, which is how did shareholders' equity change over the year and, and what influenced it? So since we've uh, since this is the 2019 annual report, we're going to take uh, a closer look at um, at just just 2019. So uh, we can see, and, and you'll see these figures right in the balance sheet too, uh, which again they'll they'll all tie together. They're all telling you this, the same thing just from a different angle, and so uh, we can see that at the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019. Uh, total stockholders' equity amounted to 1.4 billion. Now, what what influenced what what changed between 18 and 19? And so that's these items here. So you can see the totals, and you can see them across across the different categories here. So the the most uh, the most influential usually is a, a company's net income. So you you have equity uh, at the beginning of the year. And the company earns money, net income for, for shareholders. Remember, we're just talking about shareholders now. The, the shareholders earned this $1.149 billion. And so that adds to equity. Other comprehensive income, we didn't, we didn't dis discuss that in this segment. Uh, it's really just a, a sort of a, a, an income statement continued. It's some other, other items that don't don't go on the income statement but they affect equity their sort of income uh it's really not as important to understand at, at this point in the game uh, but they can influence uh they, they impact equity so they're listed here and then dividends are um and again it's it's just like the cash flow statement positive numbers uh, are are positives uh income 
uh, or positive cash flows, I should say, and the negative numbers represent uh, cash outflows. So the business, we can see that Hershey, you know, if we were just starting at this statement and we hadn't looked at the others, we could see that Hershey made 1.1 billion and then it paid out 446 million in, uh, in dividends, uh, plus another one, 164 here, because there's two, there's the common and there's the, the class B. Um, Stock-based compensation, that is a positive here because it's, um, it was listed as an expense, but it's added back uh, <clears throat> here uh, because it adds that the effect of the stock-based compensation is, is a positive uh, to, to equity, uh, as well as the, the exercise of stock options. And then uh, the, the outflow here of repurchase of common stock. And so you can see, really, I guess the best way is to, to just to look, look down this column this final column and then you can look at which item you know sometimes uh, for example the exercise of stock options we can see the total was 241 million but it was broken down between the treasury stock and the additional uh, paid in capital in Hershey's case again this is really not as important they retired some some uh, treasury shares it's um, uh, it's just something companies do from time to time but uh, it's really not as important <clears throat> uh, to, to understand. And then there's some some other, uh, so for, for every now and then on, on, on different statements, you'll see impacts of accounting changes, and that uh, in this case is, is about $4 million. So, um, you know, the, the big takeaways here is, is just that, you know, you can gain additional insight into the business. Uh, you can see the effect of the actions the company is taking uh, which affect affect your ownership interest because if if you're an owner of the Hershey company and uh, and you're seeing that they're uh, either issuing a lot of shares or repurchasing shares in this case, you, you want to understand the impact on your own position and you can also determine what uh, what the company is spending for them. So you can get that from from this statement or you can get it from the the cash flow statement. Um, and then you can take a look at the change in shares or, or sometimes in the footnotes, they will have uh, the actual purchases of the shares and what the company paid for them. So I, I hope um, I, I've really kept this, this statement pretty simple, but I did want to highlight it for everyone just because it can, it can really give you uh, another angle on the business that you don't get from the other statements. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you made it this far, I uh, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, you watching. I'm sure you've already liked and subscribed at this point if you've made it all the way through. But um, please, uh, again, uh, I'd like this to be an ongoing conversation. If uh, there's things I missed, if there's things that aren't clear, um, even specific numbers from some of these statements, if, if you want to dig into them, uh, I'd be happy to make, uh, you know, I could make a blog post, I could make a follow up video here. Um, but really, uh, really just try to try to understand, you know, try to just take a step back when you're looking at these statements and understand what they mean uh, and, and try to tie everything together. Because really, counting is the language of business and, and you're trying to, in essence, download or decode the story that the management team is telling you, the story of the past year or, or the past period. And, um, and that really helps paint a picture of the business that you're looking at. So again, thanks for watching everybody and uh, hope to see you very soon. Have a great day.